today I'm going to be demonstrating how I turned this IKEA Dell top cabinet into a five and a half foot vivarium. First, I started off by siliconing all the sides and top pieces together. I then also siliconed a front glass shelf into place to create a substrate panel. I also placed one on the bottom to create a waterproof barrier. After that, I used approximately four uh, cans of expanding spray foam, which you can see during this process. Um, it took me roughly an hour and a half or so to spray foam everything into place, um, and that does not include travel time because I actually ran out of foam and had to go and buy an additional couple of cans because of one of my old cans uh, was, I guess, a little defective. After I'd let the foam cure for 24 hours, I began the carving process. I used mainly a razor scraper and then my trusty pocket knife for this process. And I probably spent around two and a half hours in the first part carving out the foam. Uh, after that, I decided to move to using a Dremel on a drill or a wire brush on a drill. And that sped up the process quite a bit, but I still had to spend at least another hour and a half or maybe even two hours doing that and then vacuuming everything up and then using a scraper again, as you can see, to get in all the little nooks and crannies. After that, I had to vacuum up all the little dust that I made from that foam because, man, those drill bits sure do make a mess. Because I am planning on using this tank as a display case for my orchids and bromeliads, I wanted to make sure that I couldn't see any of the spray foam in my living room, so I just used some standard black spray paint to cover up those sides. After I waited another day because I needed to go back down to school and bring this with me, then I decided to use some Zoomed Eco Earth as the background. Here you can see me applying it, just using the standard silicone and dump it on and pat it down technique. Um, however, I also will use Gorilla Spray Glue at various points, and I think I might have decided that I actually like this better. Uh, the next day as I was going through and uh, patting this all down, getting the substrate off, then I realized that the Gorilla Spray Glue actually had a uh, thicker consistency of um, eco earth on it than the, the silicone did, which was kind of unusual. So I actually used that to go back through and patch up a lot of places that I'd missed. And I don't know if I'll be going back to silicone. Um, this will be my experiment to see if that lasts or not, but that was a really pleasant surprise for me. Part of the reason that I've decided I like the Gorilla Spray Glue so much is because after 10 or 15 minutes it's almost fully cured, and so you're able to really easily go and see if you've Put enough down and then you're able to just go back and fill spots which I had to do later on in some of the silicon areas. Here I started misting down the background which was a really good idea on my part because um, I actually found I had a leak in the bottom so as I was doing that water test then I had to go and dry it all out let it sit for a while and I did the silicone cure for another 24 hours as it fixed that. Here you can see me adding in my version of an ABG mix. I have a mix of Eco Earth, uh, Volcanic Stratum, Exoterra, I have cocoa fur, I have cocoa chicks, orchid bark, sphagnum moss, uh, decomposed leaves, and probably some other things I'm forgetting. I've been using this mix in a bunch of my tanks for the last year, and it's been working out really well for me. Um, I'm sure I have some springtails mixed in there as well, but just for good measure, I ended up putting in another culture from another tank. Because I forgot to mention earlier and I forgot to film it, I also have a false bottom then made out of ape crate and geotextile fabric uh, that just raises up the soil base by about two inches. Um, here you can see I'm starting to add in the plants. It took me roughly three and a half hours to put everything in. I used about 35 species. Um, I had five species of bromeliad, six if you count Atlantis. I have five species of orchids. I have, I think, five philodendrons. I have hoya, pitcher plant. Um, I think I have three or four species of begonia. Um, I have at least six air plants in there and several of the same species. Um, I also added in, I think, four different species of ferns. I also have several species of pilea or peperomia, and then also some margravia rectifolum mixed in there with a bunch of species of moss that I honestly have no idea what they are. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this tank was mainly built for my bromeliads and orchids that I have. Um, I have a Neurogelia fireball, Neurogelia tiger cub, and Neurogelia zoe. I believe. Um, along with 
to unnamed species. And then for my orchids, I have, I know an Encyclia cochleata, and then I don't know the names of the other ones because I um, got them as gifts. And so I know I have a Calia species of Ophylum, an Epidendrum, and then also, an Os oh, I do have an Oncidium. Eventually this will house a trio of my giant day geckos, but that'll take a while. And here you can see me adding in some microfauna. This is just Porcellular scaber. 